Hi, and welcome to the Self-Reliant Living Show. I am so thrilled that you are here with me. We are on Facebook and we are on YouTube. I'm gonna constantly be looking at my computer to see what you're saying. I love spending this time with you guys and um, I'm so thrilled that you are here. I'm a little bit old, my eyes are kind of bad, so if I'm going like this, you'll know what I'm doing. Hi, Kathy. Um, okay, so let's just start from the beginning. I just wanna welcome you all. I Again, I'm so thrilled that you were here with me. Like I said, this is my favorite time of the week. This is a self-reliant living show. And um, there are several ways to watch this show. You can watch on Facebook Live today and you can watch on YouTube Live today. Those are the only two places we are live this week. Um, we are live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern and 10 a.m. Pacific. So. This is a live show, so if we drop off the air or wherever we are, then rest assured you can catch the show notes because we will continue the show and you can get the show notes. We are also um, on iTunes, we'll have the replay go up on iTunes so you can listen in your earbuds if that's more convenient for you. So if you are on Facebook, please share this video. I know there are some people out there who would really love to have some natural options when it comes to seasonal allergies. So I really would appreciate it if you would share. And then also on YouTube, if you would give us a thumbs up and then subscribe, because that tells YouTube that this is uh, something that people are interested in and then other people can find it that way. Okay, so if you are watching the replay, welcome to you. And you can still participate, you can still comment on YouTube, you can comment on Facebook, and then you can also comment there on the replay show note page where at the bottom where the comments are. Okay, so of course the benefits to doing the show in these different formats is for your convenience, and I hope that you find a way that is convenient for you to watch the, this show. Okay. You can go to the show notes for this particular show by going to selfreliantlife.tv slash 036. Okay, so let me give you a quick introduction about who I am. I am Jennifer Osuch, and I am the lead teacher at Self Reliance School. I am the author of the Preparedness Planner series, and I am the host of this show, The Self Reliant Living Show, and welcome to you. So this week, we're gonna be talking about seasonal allergies and what to do about them um, and in terms of things that you can do that are natural. Instead of going to the drugstore, there are some other things that you might try first and hopefully they will work for you. Okay, so I have my notes over here too. Like I said, I'm looking at your comments and then I'm also looking at my notes because, um, I have everything written down in case I forget anything. I would not want to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go over eight natural things that you can do to combat uh, seasonal allergies. So let me just tell you a little bit about my story with allergies. I have had seasonal allergies, I did have seasonal allergies when I was a teenager and it was just horrible. I mean, I would just have sneezing fits and my mom, she would come in and she would hear me, you know, sneeze once and she would say, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Cause she knew that like 20 sneezes were coming. Right. And that's how bad it was. And, and you know, I would just all of the sudden, just my, everything would start draining my eyes, my nose. It was just really, really awful. Okay. So, um, and the things that I did you know, because it's a process over time. So some of the things I did and I started noticing some relief from that is that when I was raised in a house that had wall-to-wall -wall carpet, so when I moved out of my mom's house, I didn't have that and that helped. Um, another thing is my mother, I love her so much, um, but and you can go over her house and you can eat off her floors. I mean, she is like cleaning constantly dusting constantly and not to say that you shouldn't dust your house I'm not saying that at all but the thing is that she would dust when you really didn't need to dust and so all of the dust particles were always in the air all of the time so I think that you know looking back that that had a lot to do with 
the severity of my allergies because I still have them, but they're not near what they were when I was a teenager. Um, and it, and I've lived in this area. I haven't really moved that far to make it a difference with, with allergies. So this is just my experience. Okay, so another thing that I have done is I have switched to all natural cleaners. So I don't, I do have some carpet in my house, but I don't have wall to wall carpet. And then also I have switched to, like I said, all natural cleaners. And the other thing is that I don't wear fragrances. I just have essential oil to do that for me. That's the only uh, type of fragrance that, that I use, e even in my cleaning products, because that's, that's a natural, um, a natural scent and some of the scents are actually helpful with allergies. So we'll get to that in a minute though. Okay, so I've also cleaned up my diet somewhat because when I was younger, you know, we went to McDonald's and we had, you know, um, prepackaged meals a lot of the time. And so I've also cleaned up my diet and I eat a ton of yogurt. We'll get to that also in a minute. Okay. So I still have them occasionally, seasonal allergies, occasionally. I don't have the sneezing fits anymore. Um, but you know, every once in a while I will, um, you know, it'll be windy outside and everything will be blooming. And I know that it's, it's a, a sinus sort of allergy thing and I'll sneeze maybe once. And then occasionally I will get a little bit of pressure. It's not really a headache, but there's a little bit of pressure. So I know that, um, spring has sprung. <laughs> okay. So my kids and my husband, however, are not quite as, um, regimented, I guess, as I am. So they suffer a little bit more from the allergies. And so I'm going to show you some of the things that I use for them and for me as well. Cause like I said, it's not gone. It's just so, so, so much improved. Okay. So, um, the first thing is, um, stinging nettle leaf tea. Okay. So, um, Bill's going to show a picture of that and that is the the plant before it's dried Okay, and then um, this is a jar of the dried leaves and I'm going to show you this over here See if you can see it close up Can you see that? Okay, so that's what it looks like dried and basically this is kind of a weed and it's, you probably have experienced it before walking through a field or whatever, because if you get it on you, it'll sting a little bit. And so um, that's the bad thing about it. But the good thing about it is that it acts like a antihistamine. And so what you can do, what I do is put it in a tea. You can put it in a tea, you can put the leaves in a capsule and take it like that, or you can, you can also make a tonic. So let me back up just a little bit. When you dry the leaves, um, then they don't sting anymore. Uh, when, they're, when they're fresh, they will sting a little bit. So if you are using a fresh nettle, you want to wear some gloves. And what I would do is I would start out with the dry stuff and see if that helps you. Some people say that you need to make the tea out of the fresh leaves. And so if that is, if the dry leaves are not helping you, then you can move to the fresh leaves, but you're going to have to wear gloves. And that's why I'm saying start out with the dried, um, the dried leaves because they're much easier to handle. So in order to make a tea, what you can do is you can take, you can take your leaves, right? And I'm just going to do this while I talk. Okay, so you can make a tea, and this is the way I do it. I have these little tea bags here, and the directions here, they say to go ahead and fill up the tea bag, or not fill it up, but to put a couple of, of teaspoons in. But let me see if I can show you what I do. Okay, so I'm just gonna pretend that I'm making some tea. So I'm just going to put it in like this. And these bags are really easy to find. I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay, so I'm going to put like three, three teaspoons here in this bag and hopefully not make a mess. Okay, so the directions for the, 
the, tea, the bags, say to put it in like this and then go ahead and put your hot water in, which I've done before, but it's kind of annoying because you've got this paper thing here, so it's hard to, um, it's hard to drink. So what I do is I never fill these up very much, you know, and I mean, the most I've filled up is maybe half. So what I do is I just sort of twist it and, like this. I don't know if you can see that. And then I just wrap it over and make a little bit of a knot. And I think, let me see if I can show you that. Um, and I don't pull it very tight because you don't have to. It's not the, the leaves are not going to come out. But let me see if I can show that to you. So I just put it in like that to sort of uh, make a knot. And then I can just drop it in there and then I don't have I don't have that annoying thing <laughs> in my nose but anyway that so that's how I make um, the tea okay so the other thing that you can do is you can use uh, capsules and you can buy empty capsules little capsules made of gelatin and then you can you can, there's a tool that you can use and you can put the leaves in there and, and put the the capsule together and then you can take it that way you can also buy the capsules so if you don't want to go through all that trouble you can you can buy those the only thing that i would say about buying the capsules is that it's going to be a lot more expensive of course if you you know if you buy a bunch of leaves like this um, it's going to be a lot less expensive so it just depends on what you're doing maybe you want to just try it see if it works for you um, if you buy the capsules um, Sometimes, I'm not going to say all the time, because it depends on how, how crushed up it is, but sometimes what I'll do is take it out of the capsules and put it in the little bag and make a tea. So you could, you could do that and see if that works for you. Um, so the thing that I want to tell you, though, before you, you go off and buy the leaves or the capsules is be sure that you get organic. And the thing is that, you know, I understand that some, not everybody can buy organic produce and all of that stuff, but when you're talking about teas and herbs, it's really important to buy organic because those are some of the most sprayed um, crops that there are. And they don't rinse them off or anything like that. So buy organic herbs and buy organic teas. Whenever you're buying tea, don't buy cheap tea. Okay, and then you can make a tonic. Um, and what that is, is uh, you take the leaves and you're going to want to um, have a mason jar. I don't have like an empty mason jar. I should have brought one up here to show you. But you would take a mason jar and then you would take some leaves and you fill the mason jar about halfway up. And then you would take your favorite alcohol, vodka, um, would work just fine and then you would cover you would cover the leaves I usually go ahead and fill it up with the alcohol and then you would put a top on it and then you would let it sit for a couple of weeks you would shake it up and all of that stuff um, every couple of days you keep it in a cool dark place and then in a couple of weeks you can strain all of the uh, leaves out and then you have a tonic so it's really concentrated so all you need to do is um, consume a couple of drops you could put it in your tea you could put it in your coffee you could put it wherever that you wanted to so that is the first uh, solution I would start off like I said with the tea because that's going to be um, the the least amount and you always want to make sure that when you start um, something new that you haven't had before that you start out with a very sort of diluted amount so you make sure that you're not allergic to it or you don't have a bad reaction or anything like that okay so the second thing is milk thistle seed powder okay so Bill's showing you a picture of the the actual plant but really what you want instead of the leaves here is the seeds and then further what you want is them ground up into a powder and some people eat these seeds, you know, just like as for a snack or whatever, because they have other um, nutrition and things like that in them. But this is helpful as uh, to relieve allergies as well, because it is um, it works like I said as a um, like um, it helps with if you're in, um, inflamed. So it's anti-inflammatory. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay, but this one. You want to make sure that you are not diabetic because it could lower your blood sugar. Um, and then you also want to make sure that you're not allergic to any of the other plants in this 
uh, in the milk thistle family. And those would include things like daisies, artichoke, um, other kinds of thistle, and then kiwi. So you would just want to make sure that you're not um, going to have an allergic reaction. And if you don't, um, if you're allergic to those things, then you would not use this. But if you're not, then you're probably fine. And so same thing uh, with this. This is a powder and you could dissolve it in water if you wanted to. I would probably put it in a, in a bag. But let me go ahead and put some in this little um, plate or jar, not jar, but plate, so I can show you what it looks like. Because you saw the picture of the seeds and then this is the powder. So can you see that? Okay, so, um, so this is the uh, second thing to try. Maybe if one doesn't work, then you move on to the next one. Um, then one more herb that you can try is yarrow. And here, yeah, there's a picture of it there. And these are like the little, the dried petals. Here is the close-up of that. You can see that. Okay, and the same thing here, you, um, you can make it into a tea, you can make it into capsules, and you can make it into a tonic. And I, di I didn't say that with the milk thistle seed powder, but you can do those two as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so the thing about yarrow is you can make it into a tea, but if you make it into a tea, be sure and add something that tastes good with it because it's a bitter sort of a, a tea, it's a bitter herb. So. You could add mint, that would be a really good thing to add. Um, and then you can, like I said, also use the capsules. You can buy them already filled or you can fill your own and then you can make the, the tonic or the tincture and that would just be the same thing on all of them. You would just fill, it's like a one to two ratio. So you would fill a jar halfway and then you would fill um, halfway with the herb and then you would fill the um, jar all the way up with the alcohol. So you could make all three different varieties for all three herbs, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but like I said, you just want to be sure that um, you maybe take something else with this because it's a little bit bitter. And this also helps with tummy trouble. So you get a two for one there. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to check my comments here. Love capsules, Mandy says. Um, uh, so sad to hear that for your mom. Yeah, my mom. But you know, she's the greatest mom. I have to tell you a story about my mom. And that is that, um, oh, Meredith says, sorry, she's like, no problems. Uh, my mom, okay, so back to my mom. My mom is the greatest person though, I mean, um, and I think it's one of those things that it, her generation was raised in a way where, oh, all of these new fangled things, that it's got to be good because it's technology, right? And so I think that a lot of her generation has suffered from that. And then um, the children of that generation, right, are saying, oh, wait a minute, I don't know about that. And so, you know, I, I don't, I'm not really upset or anything like that because it was just, you know, it's just the way of the world back then. But my mom is, uh, she's wonderful and she has the best spirit. As a matter of fact, she was teaching me the other day how to use my cell phone. So this is, <laughs> you know, that's not usually what you hear, the stories you hear. You hear the children teaching the, the parents. But my mom is in her 70s and she was teaching me how to, how to use this, the cell phone. So um, she's really great. Okay, the next thing that you can try, um, and I recommend doing some of these in combination, so just know that. The next thing, I, I have this honey stick to remind myself. Okay, so the next thing I would try is local honey, and that is to eat um, local honey. And the, the theory goes that if you ingest the pollen in your area, then you're gonna build up sort of an, an immunity to it. Now. It, that may or may not work, um, but honey has so many other great qualities that it's definitely worth a try. And if you're trying some of these other things and then maybe you just put a little bit of honey in your tea, I think that's, uh, that's a really good um, strategy to try. Okay, um, 
Let's see here. You've got to make sure though, like I said, it's local honey. And the thing is that if you go to a local farmer's market, they might say it's local honey, but you've got to ask how local it is. So you've got to really make sure that the pollen, um, that the honey is made from the, the area where the bees make the, the honey, right, is really local to you and not say 100 miles away or something like that. You want it really local for it to work. Okay, so the next thing is, and I think this is the one of the things to start with and one of the best ones, and that is to use um, a nasal rinse. And you can get uh, a neti pot. This is a sort of a bottle that you just sort of squeeze and then it, you squeeze, but you can get a pot. And for those of you who've never heard of a, a neti pot or nasal rinse, what it is, is there's like a, um, um, I guess an airway in your nose and, and it go, you know, connects your nostrils, right? So in a lot of the pollen, you breathe it in, it goes up into your nose. So what a nasal rinse will do is you will take liquid water, salted water, saline, and you will force water up and then over back down through the other nostril. And it sounds like, oh, that's just torture, but it's really not. It's, um, it's similar to blowing out water, like if you go under water, if you're swimming, it's a similar feeling to that. So it's not painful or anything like that. Um, it's a little bit of an alien feeling when you first do it, but after that, it's really, really easy. And it's so really helpful because the thing is when you go outside or you know, maybe go in your closet and there's this huge dust plume that you know pops up, I don't know. But the thing is that all of that air and the pollen, the dust, everything is going up in your nose. Well, if you go straight away and rinse that out, get that out of your system, your symptoms are gonna be really, really uh, less. And so what this is, is uh, water. You take water, you have to use distilled water because um, even municipal water and well water, any other kind of water, um, can have things in it, whether it's there naturally or not, that doesn't need to be up in your nose. Because normally when you drink water, it's gonna go down to your stomach and go through your stomach and then your stomach acid will kill anything that's bad. Well, if you use this, the water's not going to go through your stomach, it's going to go up and down and then a little bit of it's gonna stay up in, in your nose. So not a lot, but I'm just saying particles, little bitty particles. And so if there's any kind of pathogen or anything like that, then that's a bad thing. So you always, always want to use distilled water when you're doing this. But it is so, so helpful. Um, and so how you use it, there's a, you can buy a pot. I don't have one here, but it's, um, it looks like a little teapot. And then you would just lean over the sink and you would take it and you would pour it up and then it'll come back down, you know, you, you, it's not holding your breath, but like I said, it's similar to going under the water and sort of blowing out. This, what you would do is you would just put it up and then you would squeeze and it comes up and down. And then what you do is you put, um, there's a solution you can buy, you can buy a pack of them. I have a pack here, you can buy, um, you can buy refills so you don't have to keep buying the, the box. So the thing is that you just use these and that's gonna help um, even more with the, um, the relief and, and drawing that area out um, where it's not like a dry climate dry, but it's dry in terms of, you know, dries up the mucus, helps with mucus. So that is one thing that I highly recommend doing. I have done it for years and years. My two younger children uh, suffered from allergies um, at a very, very young age, they're, they're better now um, because of diet and um, just basically some of the things that I mentioned before, they're much better now, but they suffered from asthma. And how they would present um, with, because they have allergies and asthma, let me just say that, okay? So and how they would pre present with asthma wasn't really wheezing. I mean, they would have trouble breathing, but really it was coughing and the trigger was the allergy. And so what I did was I taught them how to do this. And so my five-year-old would do this. And so I know that anybody who, who really wants to get some relief from allergies can do that. Okay. Um, so the next thing 
that's one, like I said, I really recommend. I really I recommend starting with it, too, because um, it's just so simple in terms of getting the, getting the irritation out of your system. And then you can use it with these other things as well. So that's what makes it really nice. Okay, so the next thing is essential oils. And so there is... Um, three that you can make a blend of. I happen to have a blend that's already mixed up here, but you can blend, um, what is it, peppermint and lemon and lavender together. And that is a wonderful way to, um, to use aromatherapy to combat allergies because that it really works what you would do is you would you can put it in a diffuser like this here so you would fill this up with water and then you would take this and you would put a few drops in here um, you could do that and then so you can diffuse that in the room where you are if this is not something that you can do or you don't have a diffuser you can get a little necklace like this this is like a personal diffuser and so you can open it up and it has a little has a little pad here. You can see that. And then what you would do is you would just put a few drops of the oil on there and then you could put this little pad back in your necklace and then you're going to have that, um, that soothing aroma all day. So that, I love this idea because you don't have to, um, you don't have to be in the same room all the time. And it smells great too. You just like take the scent everywhere you go. I love that idea. Okay, so um, that is definitely something that I do a lot. Not, not just for allergies, but for other things too. Totally love that idea. Okay, so the next thing, we're just zipping right along here, aren't we? Okay, so the next thing is probiotics. And you might think, oh gosh, that is just the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. I'm going to take a second here and make sure that there's about the comments and everything here. Um, oh, Misty, thank you so much for helping. Yes, Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, then also Amazon. And then also Spark um, Naturals. And I will have links to all of those in the show notes. Um, somebody was asking where you get these, and so I'm, I'm saying where you get everything. And let's see, I'm just making sure that I can see. I'm going to go out of the video and back in, because that seems to help. There's a little bit of a delay, uh, but not too much. So like I said, I'm old, and I'm looking down here so I can make sure that I see everything. Um, yeah, well, I will have, we will have show notes and I will have everything that I've said here in there. So you can, you can look at that at, at your leisure and yes. So there will be all this information in the show notes, all the links. Um, okay. So probiotics, right? So that does, that seems like weird, right? Why that's, that's for your stomach, right? That's not for your sinuses or your allergies. Well, the thing is that allergies, when you have allergies, right, it's your immune system going, I don't know what to do with these things that keep coming in, you know, the dust and the pollen and all that stuff. So it's your immune system trying to do something to these things that aren't really a problem, right? And I, I, I say that because it's not, they're not a problem like a virus would be, because your immune system would attack a virus, right? But your immune system is doing funky things with things that aren't really harmful to you. And so it, it is a way of saying that your, your immune system isn't completely balanced. And so now I'm not saying that, you know, um, there's other factors with allergies too. There's genetics and there is um, environment. There's all of those things too. So I'm not saying that if you had a perfectly balanced gut that you would not have allergies. I'm not saying that, but it is worth um, working on because your symptoms will be less. So probiotics, those are the good bugs um, that you you eat, and they're in things like um, yogurt and fermented foods, things like that. And they're going to make your gut more balanced in terms of the good bacteria and bad bacteria, boosting your immune your immune system. So that is something that I recommend. Um, 
My favorite one right now is yogurt. I have sm a smoothie every day and I eat a lot of yogurt and I notice a huge difference because when I was younger, again, <laughs> because you know, I was raised in that time where, you know, just take these pills and you'll be better and of course you need an antibiotic. So I was on antibiotics for a lot of different things when I was younger and now um, and suffered from that. And so now um, that I'm really conscious about that and then I take probiotics every day and I don't take the pills, I take like the food, I eat the food that has them. And I feel like that that's a stronger, um, it, it has a stronger effect on me because I've tried the pills before and I haven't noticed as big of a difference as I do the food. The food is the strongest and that makes sense. So, um, so the thing is, that if you have a healthy gut, that's going to boost your immune, immune system and that's going to help with symptoms. So that is definitely something you could try and you can try that in con conjunction with all of this other stuff too. Okay. And, oh, the last thing. Okay. So this is something um, that it, you might not have heard of before because it's it's not as uh, popular of a thought as some of those other things are. but I have noticed a difference, so I wanted to let you know. And that is that when you eat things that are lower carb, now I'm not saying go on a low carb diet or anything like that, but when you eat things that are lower carb and you don't have as much sugar, um, especially the empty carbs, I mean if you have the, um, the, the whole grains and all of those things, the complex carbohydrates, that's a different story, but if you don't have things like ice cream and candy and all the things that have those empty calories, then you're not going to have as much inflammation and I find that it helps with my seasonal allergies. So that's just something to think about. Um, it's not just me saying it, I have seen other people say it, but it's not, like I said, as wide of an idea um, as some of the other things that I have mentioned. And But I wanted to mention it because I have seen a difference because I'm not as swollen and I'm you know I don't just have as much inflammation when I do watch all of those things so that's something to consider and if you're really suffering from seasonal allergies especially this time of year um, you know you could just try it for a little while you know see how it goes and then um, you know make decisions based on your results so um, and that again can be done in conjunction with all of these things so um, I'm not saying to go out and do everything but you know, just be aware of some of these things and whatever is uh, the easiest for you to try first because we all know that the easiest thing is the thing you're gonna be, um, is likely to be more successful, then I would definitely start there. Okay, so um, I want to mention, so that was eight, right? Yeah, I think I, I counted eight because um, that's what I promised, eight, eight different ways to combat allergies. Okay, so I want to let you know, because we have been talking a lot about using plants, right? Here's three, four, uh, five, six, seven, if you want to count all, all of the ones in here, right? Um, and, well, honey's not a plant, but it, it's, it's made from plants, right? <laughs> anyway, there is a plant um, as medicine summit. It's called the Plant Medicine Summit and is totally, totally free for you to sign up for. I have signed up for it. I am so excited about this. This is an area that I have been wanting to learn more about. As you can see, I've started uh, learning some things and I'm really excited about the things I've learned and I've really, you know, I've applied them and they work and I'm just thrilled about that. So I really um, am looking forward to the summit and it is um, like I said, totally free. It runs March 20th to the 24th. And I think yesterday I sent out email. I had the wrong dates. So <laughs> it's the 20th, what, which is Monday, right, Bill? Uh, yes. I think it's Monday. So you want to go ahead and sign up for that because I think the email I sent out, it said the 22nd or something like that, but it's the 20th. So sign up now, right? So you'll get the emails and you'll know um, that it's coming. So I just wanna talk um, just a minute about that. Um, David Wolf is going to be speaking. He is an expert on uh, raw food. So you will learn how to use raw food as medicine. And then let's see, there's gonna be Jill Sansbury and she is the author of The Complete Guide to Natural Healing. So she has been out there teaching for many, many years and I can't wait 
to see what she has to say. And then there is uh, David Crow, and he is the host of the summit. And um, he is the author of Plants That Heal. So he also has been studying this extensively. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm gonna be there um, attending just like you. I cannot wait for this. Um, and I wish there was more information, you know, more summits, more uh, books about this, more people speaking, because it's one of those things that I'm just soaking up right now. I just love learning about all this stuff. So I want to make sure that you have that link. It is uh, to go and sign up. It's selfrelianceschool.com slash plants, right, Bill? Yes. Yeah, slash plants. So that should be on the screen. Um, so go and sign up. And then let me know what you think, because I'm going to let you know what I think in email, and maybe I'll write some blog posts about it. I'm really super excited about it, but do um, email me and let me know what you think. Okay, so remember, being self-reliant isn't about uh, all about you or being selfish or anything like that. It is about taking care of yourself so you can take care of the ones that you love. Take care until we talk again.